ladies and gentlemen, welcome to DCW TV. And of course, as always, we have a great show in store for you tonight. However, before we get into that, I want to talk about our upcoming special. Tuesday, August the 4th, DCW TV presents Feel the Heat. And we've already discussed the main event of that evening, which will be Vladimir Kolov going one-on-one -on -one with Brimstone with the DCW Heavyweight Championship on the line. However, we do want to announce to you fans right now that on August the 4th, at Field the Heat, there will be yet another championship match taking place. It will be Mac Daddy Duds defending the DCW Gulf Coast Championship against the Mountain Man. Now, you saw just a few weeks ago on DCW TV, Mac Daddy Duds planted an object across the head of the Mountain Man to try and secure himself a victory. However, Shifty Schilling reversed the decision of that match, giving the Mountain Man the win, but by disqualification. I mean, Mac Daddy Duds retained the championship. Tuesday, August the 4th, it is Mountain Man's time to try and get that DCW Gulf Coast Championship from the grasp of Mac Daddy Duds. The question is, can he do it? Or will Mac Daddy Duds have yet another game plan to try and keep that DCW Gulf Coast Championship? Now that's going to be a big match for Tuesday, August the 4th when DCW TV presents Feel the Heat. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a great show here for you tonight. It will be in our main event of the evening, Handsome Rob Cabela going one-on-one -on -one with Chris Paps, which will be a Diamond Division quarterfinal match. However, our first match of the evening, it will be Delicious Van Vicious going one-on-one -on -one with Charlie Ace in our first DCW Diamond Division Championship Tournament quarterfinal match. Without further ado, let's get to the action. But at least he washed his hair this time and not in the toilet. Oh, come on, Brandon. I get it. I get it. You're good friends with Van Vicious. I'm sure you're, I'm, I'm certain you're rooting for him in this tournament. But let's try to be a little bit fair. Let's be a little bit unbiased. Okay? I, I, I will be fair. It's fair to say that Van Vicious is going to take care of Charlie Ace tonight. But you know that Van Vicious, me and Van Vicious, we're rolling and partying in Miami, Florida every weekend. Do you even know what rolling red is? I, I don't. I, I don't uh, that's know. right. You're not sophisticated enough to know what caviar is. Well, collared elbow tie-up nonetheless. Both fall to a finish. 15-minute time limit. Our official for this contest, Shifty Schilling. And Van Vicious has got the rookie in the corner. Oh, and... He's like he was going to throw a punch, but just showing, hey, yeah, I, I've got look at him position, flinching. I can do whatever I want. Look at him flinching. Yeah, he ain't ever been in the ring with greatness like that before. I will say that it looks like Van Vicious does have a size advantage over Charlie Ace heading into this contest. Collar elbow tie up once again, and Van Vicious going to send Charlie Ace to the corner again, perhaps just showing a little bit of strength, saying, hey, kid, I'm stronger than you. And, oh, wait a minute, but Charlie Ace ducks down, and now going after the abdomen, and now sending Van Vicious, but a counter, he reverses, oh, Gorilla Press, he's got him up, no, but Charlie Ace countered, nice counter by Charlie Ace, and a head scissors by Charlie Ace, and Van Vicious going to take a little breather. Take a breather, take a timeout, give him a timeout, ref, he needs a timeout to get his breath here. Come on, Brandon. There's no timeouts in professional wrestling. We've established. There's always a timeout for delicious Van Vicious. Look at this. This is greatness right here. And spending his time talking a little trash to the, to the fans in attendance as the referee goes to count. And now, oh, whoa, what a shot. And I believe that fist was closed, Brandon. And now Moonsault. No, Charlie Ace out of the way. He went for a super kick. But wait a minute, Van Vicious got him up. In a torture rack and a vicious rack bomb oh. connects. He just planted the that's young ball kid. Game. That's ball but game. That, that's got to be it right there. Oh, but Charlie Ace managed Shifty to get Shifty Schilling took too long right to get down there. That, that should have been the ball game. Shifty was a little slow getting in there for the three count. Hey, hey, watch that. Sh 
Jeffrey's count and position was fine. I'm just quite frankly surprised he kicked out. But now, Bam Bish is going to torture Woo! the kid. Lit him up what like a, a Christmas shot. tree. Talking a little bit of trash, but now, when it's Charlie Ace has got Van Bishes in the corner and throwing some chops of his own to Delicious Van Bishes. And now going to send him off the ropes, but Van Bishes reverses. Oh, Charlie Ace went for a crossbody. He was caught in a big slam by Van Bishes. Just the power of Delicious Van Bishes. This could be it right here. Oh. And that, that should have been I don't know what what this referee's doing. He's taking his time getting down there to count. It should have been over a long time ago. Well, look, Brandon, come on. That was a nonchalant pinfall right there. No wonder Charlie H was able to get his shoulders up. He didn't even try to pin it. And now he's got him tangled up in the corner and just driving that boot into the chin and throat of Charlie Ace. And this does not look good for the rookie, Brandon. I don't even know what gives Gene Miller the idea to put this Charlie Ace in the ring. He is not even on the same level as Delicious Van Vicious. This should be, Delicious Van Vicious should just be handed the Diamond Division Championship. He's the only one that deserves that title. Look, that driver right there, though, was methodical in how he pressed him. But look at the, the nonchalant pinfall once again. There's, there's no wonder this match is continuing. Van Bish is hitting Charlie Ace with some powerful moves, but he, it's like he just believes he has this match in the bag. He really needs to get down there and actually try to pin the kid. The kid could surprise him. We saw Charlie Ace just a few weeks ago surprise Rob Cabela. He could, you know, he didn't beat Rob, but he could surprise Van Vicious here tonight. Well, that was beginner's luck. He's not going to pull nothing over on Van Vicious. The only reason this match is still going on is because the referee is slow to get down there to count to three. I have seen faster moving people than Shifty Schilling here tonight. Oh, oh wait a minute, wait a minute. Van Vicious has got Charlie Ace. A power bomb connect. That's it. That's it right that, there. That's got to be it. That, that's it. One, two, but Charlie Ace manages to get his shoulder up. But that nonchalant pinfall once again. Do you not see how slow Shifty Schilling is moving here? Shifty Schilling's pin has been, his count has been fine. He's been in position. His count has been consistent. Van Vicious is just careless. Another big power bomb. It's not to say that he's not dominating Charlie Ace, but come on, actually pin the kid. This could be it. No, once again, Charlie Ace with the shoulder up. Brandon, what's it going to take for Charlie Ace to get some momentum back? I'm just going to say this delicious Van Vicious. Come on, baby, put him away. I know Shifty Schilling's slow on the count, but you got to – here Here goes the third powerbomb. Another powerbomb. This could be it. No! Charlie Ace with the counter, and he's up to his feet. He's trying to get up to his feet, but perhaps – just too much pain in the back, just too much, those power bombs. Charlie Ace couldn't quite get to his feet in time, and now setting up drop kick connects. He actually gets the man off his feet. Van Vicious is down. Charlie Ace, what's he got planned now? He's in a lot of pain. He went to clothesline him, but that time Van Vicious did not leave his feet. And now going for that head scissors again, but Van Vicious caught him and plants him. Bam! Could this be it? That's it right there. Ball game. That's so why lucky. Delicious Van Vicious is going to be your Diamond Division champion right here. This is greatness. There is nobody better than Delicious Van Vicious. If you thought that the announcements tonight were done, you have another thing coming. Ladies and gentlemen, here to announce right now our huge main event for next week on DCW TV, it will be for the Diamond Championship Wrestling Tag Team Championship. The main event, the Assassin and MT2 will finally defend their championships against War and Beast. LB Hughes, the War King, and Jarrell, the Beast, Maxwell. This has been several weeks in the making. The question is, by the end of next week, who will walk away? Who will be the Diamond Championship Wrestling Tag Team Champions? Will it be 
the main event retaining or will we have new champions in war and beat but that's next week ladies and gentlemen coming up next here on dcw tv it will be the second Diamond Division Tournament quarterfinal match. It will be handsome Rob Cabela going one-on-one -on -one with Chris Paps. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Walter Alexander sat down with handsome Rob Cabela today to discuss this tournament, and this is what Rob had to say. Let's do this. This Diamond Division Tournament, what would it mean to you to become the first champion? Diamond Division Champion. First ever, handsome Rob Cabela. Yeah, feels right saying it. And uh, what would it mean? It would mean everything. And this is what we live for, is to fight and to hold gold. So I hope tonight Chris Paps is ready because I know I'm damn well ready. And I'm coming for one thing and one thing only, to become the new, the first ever, and the best, dare I say, the diamond of diamond championship wrestling. <sighs> it's going to be a big task for Chris Pass, even though he did get a lot of, uh, he did take Vladimir Kowal to the limits. That may have gave him the big head, and he's not really that good just yet. He just got lucky. Beginner's luck. Beginner's luck against Vladimir. Well, we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. One fall, 15-minute time limit. Don White, Shoes Gravat, our official for this contest. And Rob Cabell, hey, perhaps doing the right thing, extending his hand. Maybe He's always doing respect. the right thing. This is an honorable competitor. Have you not known of that before? Well, Chris, uh, Chris Paps, uh, not exactly going for it, I guess. Well, that's because Chris Paps thinks he's better than Rob Cabella. He don't think that he... Uh, he wants to get a sh handshake. He's not a sportsman. He's not. He doesn't want to do it the sportsmanship way. A big shove by Chris Paps. Now, Brandon. Oh, the question is: is how is Chris Paps' mind going into this? You know, I, I would say that was a little bit arrogant just then. Well, I'll say that too because I'm telling you, he's getting the big head after he got a chance to take on greatness, and he kind of took him to the limit. I think Vladimir was just a little off his game, but other than that. Vladimir won, so I don't know what this Chris Papp's so big-headed about right now because he's taking on the handsome one, Rob Cabela. But he is big body shots. And big body shots. Uh, oh, now more big body shots to the abdomen ribs of Rob Cabela, and this contest not exactly starting how I thought it would. No, it's not, but I'll say this, though. Chris Papps does have a weight advantage over Rob Cabela right now. But Rob Cabell, he is a, he's the wily veteran, and I think he can pick it out, and, you know, he'll, get, his, he'll get it right. Chris Paps, Chris Paps, trying to get him in the middle of the ring. I got him in the corner again. More body shots by Chris Paps. I'm seeing a little bit of arrogance, I think, on his end. I'm I seeing mean, a lot think, of it. But he's, I think he's thin in the line between confidence and arrogance, perhaps. And, and I don't know now. This guy's come to play two weeks in a row. So I don't know. This may be something good we're coming into. I'm liking this out of Chris Paps. Well, I, I think, I I think I Rob's know. getting a little soft on us. I don't. I don't think. I don't think that Chris Paps needs to get the big head, so to speak. I mean, he did have a very impressive performance with Vladimir Kolov. But, you know, he's got to be focused if he wants to win this match. Rob Cabela is a top-tier talent here in DCW. Yeah, well, you know, I've known Rob Cabela for a while. And oh, what a slap to the face by Rob Cabela. That's and the Rob Cabela time. I know. That's the Rob Cabela I know because Rob Cabela shouldn't be. He's sitting here talking about he's humble, trying to do this and trying to do that. Oh, my gosh. Just shut up and wrestle and do what oh, you what do Oh, what a best. counter, though. Nice takeover by Chris Papps. And Rob, well, Rob Cabela with the knife, rolling out of it, very nice. You know, there's nothing wrong with trying to be humble, Brandon. I mean, maybe Rob Cabela has turned over a new leaf. Let me nice tell you something takeover. about being humble. Humble will get you nowhere but beat. When you care what these peons think, that's when you lose your concentration in that ring. Now, speaking of Mr. Paps here, doesn't he have a background in amateur wrestling? 
He does, Brandon. You're absolutely right. He does, and that has he's definitely used that to his favor so far in this little bit of chain wrestling that he's had against Rob Cabela. He's definitely no slouch. I'm just worried that maybe his performance from last week has gone to his head a little bit. It, it probably it, it's not gone to his head. He's just sitting there. Oh, I'm looking shot. at him now. See, this guy is about. a brawler. He really is. Oh, what a kick to the what face a by kick Rob. To the face. Yeah, absolutely right. And now Chris Pass reversed though. Rob Cabela has got him in a front face lock now. But like we were talking about with Rob earlier, you know, I, I don't think that there's a problem with having the fans behind you, Brandon. I mean, I, if anything, I feel like that's a big momentum builder for you. Each the and every fans match. will bring you down. These peons will bring you down. They're not there to help you. They're there I to distract you from winning. Wait, wait, going for the cover. Quick kick out though, not quite. And now, maybe back at a side headlock, it looks like. And uh, Rob Cabela trying to go toe to toe with him. Rob Cabela is the one with the most experience in this contest. And now Rob went for something, but it oh. did not work. He's got him There's up. That. Oh my God, what a gut buster by Chris Pat. There's that, there's that size advantage and that strength advantage coming into play for Chris Paps. I'm telling you right now, this Chris Paps is starting to show me something. This is only his second match. He on the abdomen, the chest abdomen area of Rob Cabela this entire match with body shots and that huge gut buster that was a little higher than normal but definitely did the damage. Rob Cabela's looking worse for wear, Brandon. Ooh, just an end to the corner again and a big axe handle to the shoulder blades and a lot of aggression by Chris Paps. This Chris Paps is impressing me now. All right, he goes toe to toe with the DCW Heavyweight Champion. Here we go, one, one count only. But he's impressing me right now. I think this kid's got a mean streak in him. He is, he is impressive, Brandon. But you know, mean streak is right. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I really, I really liked his ability. Oh, just dropping his knee onto the back of Rob Cabela, and now stretching, handsome Rob Cabela. Over his knee, that back has got to be in a lot of pain. That abdomen area, that central area of Rob Cabela is in worse shape right now than it was at the beginning of this match. Well, you see, the problem with Rob right now is like you're talking about him wanting to be humble and then try to please these fans. This is where the weakness comes in, and Chris Paps is ignoring all that. Chris Paps is here to take care of business. He's not worried about these fans. You can look at him and see. Nice counter out though by Rob. Big forearm, but another shot by Chris Paps to the jaw. Rob Cabela has definitely suffered in this match. And no, I don't think it's because of trying to be a little more humble. And he, wait, nice counter though by Rob Cabela. Looked like he tried to go for a power bomb. It did not work. And now big clothesline by Rob Cabela. And it looks like Rob Cabela is coming back in this match. Picking up some momentum. Sling Blade connects. Plenty Chris Paps onto the mat. And the rookie did not see that coming. That was a rookie mistake by Chris Paps. And then a nice big. To the face. This could be it, Brandon. Could he do it? Show oh. up, though, by Chris Paps. Chris Paps not going to give up this easy. I'm telling you, this kid has come in. This is a, this is only his second match in DCW. He took on a DCW heavyweight champion, and he's taking on what I considered before tonight as one of the futures of DCW. But I think his mind is elsewhere because Chris Paps has come in and pretty much kind of dominated most of this match right now. You were praising Rob Cabela until I said that perhaps he was trying to show some more, hum show some humility. And now suddenly you're gonna turn against him? Well, I mean, you can't let these peons affect you in the ring. That's what I'm saying. When they, when you want them to be humble and all this, that humble gets you nowhere. Have you not noticed that? What's going on right here, Brandon? These two men have been trading Big shots. superplex and coming up, hopefully. This could be bad for Rob if he plants it. He's got him up, superplex. That's not good. If you're Rob that's, Cabela. That's got to be it. Get over on him, Paps. That's got to be it. Get him. Get your first victory. Oh, Stop. Test around. Here we go. He needs a cover. One, two. Don White Shoes, you're so slow. You that's that should have been a all. three count. That's not it at all. Chris Paps talked a lot of trash prior to the cover. If he would have just got on Rob Cabela, this could have been it. Well, Don White Shoes, Cravat should have already been in position to count the three. Chris Paps getting frustrated. You know, I 
I the kid, the kid Chris Paps, I you know, he he earned a lot of respect from his peers, I think, last week, but his actions in this match have been borderline arrogant, and that does not fare well for him. I don't know if he realizes that. Chris Paps setting him up for something here though, Andrew, and I think this may be it. He's getting him set up with a forearm look. Oh, wait a minute, he's caught by Rob Cavella for a burst. Sliced bread, no, on his feet. Trend Center connects. The Trend Center connects. And that's it. Well, Rob pulled that meanness out to pick up the victory. And if he better look at this video when he gets home and check it out and see that he does not need these peons behind him and he needs to stop being humble and focus on winning in the ring. Come on, Brandon. Rob Cabello won this match fair and square. He did it the right way, and that's what's important right there.